Uh, hi everybody, I'm Brent English, President of Robust Tools, and today I'm in Sam Angelo's well-equipped wood turning studio where he shoots all of his videos featuring robust equipment. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Sam. Okay, I am about ready to go out in the backyard here and crank up my chainsaw. Today's topic, I'm going to turn a natural edge bowl. And the first order of business is to select the wood. What I have on hand, I've got a nice Osage orange log. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that. I've got some ash and I've got some honey locust. So I'm going to suit up and meet you in the backyard here. Now I'm thinking about maybe doing a little video on safety. Uh, maybe I'll make that one of my midweek madness videos because you got to really take that safety seriously. So I'm going to suit up. I'm going to uh, wear shaps. That's right, they're called chaps, not chaps. That's a British guy who's down at the pub drinking a pint. Uh, I'm gonna wear a helmet, shoes, uh, and if you have steel toe shoes, that's a really good thing. Gloves, hearing protectors, and I'm gonna wear a nice heavy Carhartt coat, partly because it's kind of cold today. So I'll meet you in the backyard. Let's crank up that saw. Okay, as I begin this project, I'm cutting up some logs with my chainsaw. And one of the things I need to do first here, I've got a big spike of some sort uh, embedded in this log, and I'm cutting the end of this off. You can see it on the right side of the screen there. Uh, there's a sneak peek of my finished bowl on the inside with some finish on it. And throughout the video, I will... Uh, lock my chain on my chainsaw. There's a close-up of that spike. I'm going to put a video up on chainsaw safety. It'll be up in a week or two. It'll be sort of a sister video to this. Just some do's and don'ts of using a chainsaw. There's a shot of the outside of my bowl that I will work on in this video. And I'm splitting this log in half, and this is the log that I will take my bowl from. Okay, I made myself four nice blanks for a natural edge bowl. And I was able to find some ash. I really wanted to turn this out of ash. And the diameter of this piece of wood I'm going to call it nine inches right there. And I've got that marked in chalk from here to here. So that's nine inches. One reason for leaving this um, half log a little bit longer is I have a couple small splits in the end of these right here. And hopefully when I take this off, I'll remove those splits. All right. so. I have a number of poster board circles, templates. This one is 10 inches, so I'm, I'm adding a little bit. I can always uh, make the bowl a little bit smaller to match that 9 inch dimension. So I'm going to take, actually this is a roofing nail that I found. Make sure that's sort of lined up this way. Now, I should mention, I shouldn't need to mention, but if you were to cut this with the bark down on the bandsaw table, it'd be very dangerous. Okay, so this is a really good method. Most people use this. I can just uh, follow this circle around with my bandsaw blade. So let's just do that right now.
All right, I don't have a lot of cracks here. Just maybe one little split will take care of that when we start turning. So, yeah, we're ready to move on. Let me take my so let me take my cardboard uh, circle out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole with this um, wide paddle bit. I'm going to go down through the bark and. Alright, now what I'm going to use is a spur drive, and I've got uh, a set of chuck jaws that I think I will use for this operation. And I'm going to just put my spur drive uh, into the opening here at the very center of these chuck jaws. They're three inch. And we'll lock that uh, spur drive down. Now, off camera, I took my mallet and really bashed that spur drive into the, uh, the opening here where I drilled that hole. Make sure everything's locked down. All right, now I'm gonna try to make sure that I hit all the high points. And one of the first things I need to do is check my high points and my low points on my bowl blank. All right, so this would be a high point, and down here would be a low point. And it's important that those are level. If you get them just a little bit off, they're going to look kind of funny. Uh, we will revisit that as we go along. I'm going to take a marker and just uh, right where the bark and the wood meet, I'm going to make a mark. Uh, and in this camera, I'll show you the difference. So I've got probably an eighth of an inch difference here. There's that one mark right where the bark and the wood meet. Now, I'm going to leave it there right now. I'm going to do a little bit of turning and then I'm going to revisit that and check my, uh, my high point, my low point. It's such a small difference that moving it, I may not get it quite in the right place, but uh, it's a good idea to check this several times as you're uh, turning this. So let me uh, find a good tool and get my face mask on. All right, I'm uh, going to use a little bit longer tool rest for this first bit of turning, and I'm going to uh, approach the very bottom of this bowl. Now, I should mention, this is the bottom. I'm going to put a spigot on here, right in this area, and the bark will be the very top of the bowl. So let me get in position. Now this particular Robust lathe has a remote control uh, on a on a cord for the stop and start and the variable speed. So I'll turn that down all the way. Make sure I'm cleared, and we'll just uh, we'll just start her very slowly. I'll put this in a position where I can easily and safely reach it. All right, now the tool I'm using is a three-quarter inch bowl gouge. It's a monster, but boy, it does a really nice job. Get the speed going a little bit faster. Now that's probably 500 RPM.
All right, now I have the entire bottom of my bowl leveled off. I'm going to move my tool rest just a little bit, start working my way around this corner. Now you'll also notice that I've got my flute almost completely pointed upward. Now what that does is it's a little bit of a scraping cut until I make that surface flat and intrude up. The force of the wood coming down uh, makes the tool go directly into the tool rest and it makes it easier on my hand. This is something I learned years ago at the Utah Wood Training Symposium. Now, you'll see as I'm making this cut right here that that scrape turns into a proper cut with my bevel rubbing. This surface is all trued up right up to about here, and I really like that, uh, that wood. It's uh, very pretty. So, I'm going to just keep working on this. I'm going to go put a, a sharpen on this tool and uh, work my way around here. And then, one of the next things I need to do is put uh, a tenon down here. And I'm going to use these chuck jaws that I have already in my lathe. Alright, now I've cranked the speed up. It's about 800 RPM. Now my goal in this split screen shot here is to round over the outside edge of my bowl. And I've accomplished most of that. I'm working my way down to the bark, and later on I'll make a cut in the opposite direction to guarantee my bark doesn't come off. But I'm um, truing that up, and in the left view right there, you see that my, my gouge is becoming more of a cutting tool. I'm, I'm hitting the bevel and making a true cut on, on the bowl. All right, now in this camera right here, you'll notice that I've reached the lower area of bark. Okay, so I'm going to take my, my Sharpie and I'm going to mark the first area right here. Okay, and holding my, my hand in the same position, there's the difference, okay, from, from this to right in here. I will make an adjustment. I'm not sure if I'll do that right now. Now the other thing, I'm going to work on my tenon next, and then I'm going to move my, my uh, tool rest and go from the top of the bowl down to the smaller diameter, uh, and that will help prevent the bark from falling off. There, I'm going to just check my uh, dimension for my, my tenon right in there. Now I'm beginning to form my tenon and I've got a 5 8 inch bowl gouge and I'm removing the bulk of the wood around the base of my bowl where my tenon or spigot is going to be. And now I've got a 3 8 inch spindle gouge and I'm just detailing that spigot. I'm using a 3 inch scroll chuck. It's a Vic Mark. Trying to get a nice sharp shoulder on that tenon, and I'll reverse it and work on the inside. Now I've taken a second off camera to realign my low point right here. And where this dotted line is, that's the true uh, position for my lower point. I just uh, moved that up a little bit. Uh, it was off quite a bit. So you'll notice also that I'm again out of balance. 
and that happens when you realign that. Now later on I will go back to my high point and make sure it's in a good position. So uh, I'm going to continue turning. And now one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to spray this uh, outside of this bowl with water. We got some cracks right here and I'm going to have to deal with those one way or the other. I don't know if I can eliminate those later on or I'll end up with a really small bowl. You'll also notice I'm wearing a glove. Oop. You'll, you'll also notice I'm wearing a glove. Be very, very careful. The shavings coming off this are sharp and hot and I'm uh, careful not to get my my glove anywhere near this spinning piece of wood. So, turn the lathe on slowly, crank her back up. Shut my lathe off and see where we're at. I had to re-true up my tenon here because it was out of balance because I moved the, the piece of wood. So I'm going to come around and keep going to the top here and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut from the top of the bowl down. Okay, um, ordinarily this is really going in the wrong direction. Okay, I'm going into unsupported wood but I don't want that bark to fall off and if I go in this direction which is proper the bark can can fall off there. Now after I adjusted for the high and low points my bowl blank became out of balance once again so I had to do a little bit more work on the outside. Here I am cutting from the top of the bowl down to the spigot and I'm doing this so the bark doesn't come off. I'm actually going in the wrong direction, as I mentioned before. But this works very well to do this. And I'll do a little scraping and clean up my tool marks later on. Okay, now I'm working on the very bottom of my bowl. And I said it's going to be elegant. Well, I'm working on the shape. And what I'm using right now is a traditional... Uh, bowl gouge grind and I can get in there uh, with my tailstock in that position ordinarily I might be I might be hitting that so let's uh, do a little bit of fine tuning on this I'm going to make this base relatively small it's going to be smaller than this tenon eventually This wood is wet, all right, and it's a little bit more difficult to get a, a fairly good surface on that. So we'll go back later on and, and make that really nice. Now I am just about ready to establish my wall thickness right here on this higher uh, level. And the way to do that is take your tool and go directly in to the bowl. What I've been doing is going at an angle. Well, this is way, way too, uh, too thick, obviously. This is pretty close. All right, now just to show you a very safe method of doing this, I'm going to use my eighth inch parting tool and work my way down to this area right in here. Eventually I want a quarter of an inch or less wall thickness. Uh, 
Okay, so I was just turning, minding my own business, and I'm uh, uncovering a nail. Let me, let me lock my headstock. Got to dig this out, and chances are you'll run into something that uh, shouldn't be there. There we are. Now what I did was I used a parting tool to uncover that as much as possible. It's easy to sharp. It's easy to sharpen a parting tool. Uh, let's just see if I can get in there and take this out. Okay, I need a bigger hammer. Well, it's always something. I think I got her here. There we go. Now I've done a little bit of work off camera and um, work my way down to the, the depth I want. So I'm going to come back out here a little bit further with my, my bowl gouge. Well, I hope you didn't mind me throwing in just a little bit of music there. I don't need to always talk. So here I'm working on the inside of my bowl and I'm approaching that rim and I'm being very careful. I need to establish about a 3 8 inch uh, wall thickness. All right, now one thing I'm trying to accomplish is I want to get down below this area of bark. Okay, and it'll be way down into here and then I'll have a nice round trued up surface to, uh, to turn. Now one point I would make here is I'm cutting around the rim. I'm taking my gouge and going directly towards the headstock and this is going to create a nice even bark edge all around my rim. Okay, time to check my depth. I've gone down quite a ways right in the center and I'm going to take my my depth gauge. Now it's difficult to align this on this uh, bark edge, intermittent edge there. So what I do is I'm going to just put this right along my tool rest and lock in that depth right there. So then I'll just take this, flip it, and again hold that along my tool rest. And I'm going to mark the depth because I'm, I'm really close can always take that down a little bit further. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to back my camera off for one thing. And this depth down here, I'll connect that level to this level and take all this wood away. Now mostly what I'm trying to accomplish at this point is just to remove a lot of waste. I've got the rim established, I've got a good wall thickness, and I'm green turning this so I've got to have a fairly thin wall so my bowl doesn't crack. Just working my way down to the center of the bowl and then we'll move on and we'll probably go to a different tool. Right, now I'm working my way down to the bottom here. I am below this bark area right here. So turning from here to the center, I'm in uh, an area that's all trued up. Now what I'm using, what I'm going to try to use, is this bigger bottom feeder. It's a traditional grind and I'm going to work my way down. It's a little bit thick right there. Now as I'm using my bottom feeder here to clean up the bottom of this bowl, you'll notice that the angle of my tool is a little different. I'm holding that handle out a little bit farther. Now what this does at the cutting edge and because it's a traditional grind I'm getting more of a sheer cut because of the angle of the cutting edge. Alright well I'm very happy with my progress up to this point. 
Um, this bowl is never going to be a showpiece. I'm probably not going to finish it. Um, but you get the idea how to get to this point. I've got a little bit of a um, nib down there at the bottom. I'm going to take a scraper, take that away, maybe work my way up, up the side just a little bit. So I've got a negative rig scraper right here. Now I'm going to work just a little bit more on the bottom here. I usually uh, turn these green to completion, okay? And then I put them away in shavings, the same shavings that are on the floor down here, for a week or two. Put them in a paper bag and check it. Uh, there are some cracks here. I'm not sure how this is going to end up. The cracks could get really bad. But I'm going to, you know, finish it. I'll probably do a little bit of sanding and I'll show you the final the final bowl.